we are starting with this book, Americana. I was really happy because I was thinking, this is a story that has to be told. I thought it would have been richer to have Obinze not available. We wasted so much time over the seven months where nothing was happening. Yes. Welcome to Inspiration Monday. My name is Catherine Mwangi. We are at Azure Hotel, Lantana Road, Westlands. Beautiful place. Thank you so much to the management for giving us the space to do this show. It's books and blogs, and today we do it a bit differently. We have a book review. Actually, four book reviews, but we'll take it in you know, one book at a time. And uh, over time, you'll get to see I have a new co-host uh, for some of them. But for now, we have a panel. And I'll introduce them from my extreme, this is, this is left, <laughs> my extreme left. <laughs> so I will start with John Mazembe, right? Yeah. He is the CEO, yes, of Oxford Publishers. You must be the youngest, like, CEO of a publishing company in Kenya. Am I right? Ah, uh, no. You're only 39. <laughs> so is there someone younger than you? They are, the companies are different eh? in terms of scale. Okay. You can be a CEO of something. This is you being modest. He's the youngest, <laughs> okay, he's <laughs> of a publishing house in Kenya. So very welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. And we have Shiko Kimani. She has a book, self-published, Nairobi Cocktail. Two books. Two actually. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. There Bill was Nairobi Cocktail you only told me she has one. Cocktail. <laughs> Which cocktail? Nairobi and Immigrant. So two books on cocktails, Nairobi <laughs> and Immigrant. She'll tell us a bit more about that. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And of course, my colleague here, Smita, <laughs> who I'm always saying, I do not believe that we work together because I, I used to read his column when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Lady Catherine, I call her the Zerina. Now you're what taking you're, over. What you've just said makes me feel like having a Russian cocktail. <laughs> I don't this cocktail she's bring. I want a Russian you cocktail. You because you schooled yeah. in Russia. At this, at this so Azul. everything is Russia for you. Yeah. Uh, no, it's because what you said makes one feel like getting inebriated. <laughs> and not just on literature. Yeah. No, but you know, he's a columnist with a standard with an Arabia and he has a, a many books. He's always giving me books, even for Christmas, like very yeah. thoughtful gifts. Yes, and yes. today I'll give you the best I've ever given you. Oh my goodness! Yeah. It's um, it's called 2063. Is this your latest? Yes, it's my uh, Afrofuturistic novel. It's about 2063, mm -hmm. and I'm giving it to you because you truly are a fountain of youth. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. To say that again, make sure yeah, all yeah. the cameras have captured that. <laughs> I'm, I'm truly a fountain of... Yeah, you're a fountain of youth. <laughs> you look exactly the same as you did when I first knew you <laughs> in 1963. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Good for me. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate this yeah. gift. Yeah. Have you signed it? Oh, you yes. have! Yes. Yes. Ooh! Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it says, for the Serena Catherine who freezes time. Oh. If, if I continue reading, we won't do the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll read that later. We are starting with this book, Americana, um, by the renowned uh, Nigerian author, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I hope I pronounced that right. Don't worry, we'll forgive you. <laughs> You'll forgive yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that How would you pronounce we that right? We are not right? Nigerians. Right. <laughs> yeah, we are just normal Kenyans. Yeah. Can, do you see a Nigerian on this show? Wait, I have Nigerian roots, eh? Oh, oh, oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But that's for later. I'm glad they didn't take your ancestor across the Atlantic. Because <laughs> you didn't be here. Okay. Yeah. So, Americana, this book by this lady who is really renowned, glorified worldwide. Um, my producer, Bill Ha, forced me to read this book. I have nothing against African authors, it must be, it must be known. I'm very passionate about the Kenyan ones, because, and that's why we do this show, because we want to like, identify who are these Kenyan authors, whether famous or not. And I've gotten the opportunity over the last two years since this show began to feature so many of them, both bloggers and authors. Um, I can't remember, John, whether I featured anyone from Oxford. Maybe I did, I just cannot remember. It's been two have. years. But it's the first time you're featuring an, uh, uh, an African author, one who's famous. I just finished reading this story. Of course, I have my opinion, but I will start with you, John. What's, what, how did you find this story? I know you've read it. Um, I, I found it um, expansive. 
Okay, that's a, you're very modest, eh? I should just be ready for you. In the in the sense that yeah. I've read Purple Hibiscus, which okay. is about a family. I've read Half of a Yellow Sun, which is about a country. And uh, this one, she goes to the world. So I've seen that that growth, and that's real. That really that make, made me think uh, she's really growing as an author. Which one came first? Purple Hibiscus. Okay. Yeah, and it's about a family. When you read it, it's just about a family. Um, yeah, but when you read half 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 of Yellow Sun is more of uh, the Nigerian, uh, the country of Nigeria, okay. the Biafra War, and then now here she takes the globe. Okay. So I've seen that growth, okay. which I found a bit uh, amazing. Wow! So you were amazed. I was amazed by the growth, <laughs> and and even the way the the way yeah the way she's growing even geographically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I agree. With Look you. at you jumping! Yes, I wanted yes. to go to Shiko first. Yes. Can we have oh, oh, a female yes, voice? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. I can do this to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Americana. Yes. I only read Americana in the last one week, I must admit that. Okay. Just like me, so it's okay. Yes. So, and when I was reading it, I was thinking, perhaps I should have called my book Britisha. Because we sort of tell the same story, okay. but mine is based in Britain. Yeah. Hers is based in America. America. But I can see, I felt like I was. She was taking words out of my... Oh. Yeah, and it's a story I'm very passionate about because it's about immigrants going to wherever they're going, looking for better lives, looking for, you know, they think it's the land of milk and honey, and then you get there, and then you realize, oh my God, I want to go back home. Yeah. Then you can't go home because now the shame and the expectations, everybody thinks you're going to become a millionaire when you get there. So for me, I was really happy because I was thinking, this is a story that has to be told because I think if people knew what happened, yeah. there would be no... The exodus train. wouldn't be that much. Yeah. yeah. And okay. yeah, I loved it. I loved it. But I also was happy I read it just recently because I'd have started thinking, I think I copied her storyline. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but I loved American. So your Nairobi cocktail it. is more. No, no, no. The immigrant. The cocktail. immigrant cocktail. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. It tells the story. It's one person, a girl who almost sells her soul. Okay. To make it out of this country, and then she goes there, and then things are not as she thought they would be, right. which is more or less the same thing. So yeah, I loved it. Okay. Yeah, are you going to be the dissenting voice? Uh, uh, yes. Um, okay. Only in this sense that okay. um, um, my publisher John said about um, that Chimamanda is growing, but I think of all our stories, this was the one that must have been easiest for her, speaking okay. uh, as an author to write, simply because it mirrors so much of our own either experiences of the diaspora experiences. Um, I think half of a yellow sun would be a much more complex story. Okay. I find it a much more complex, just thinking as a writer. Um, as for um, what you're just saying, that uh, out there is not heaven. Yes. It's okay, you know, like at least we have something to do. We have jobs and so on. And um, but this country, just the politics around, you know, uh, like um, immigrating or going like to America or you know the West or anything, Kenya is already becoming very hard, uh, and for the vast majority of people, yeah, you can see why people who want green cards, yeah, they want to win green cards the same way they want to win lotto, yeah, <laughs> the same way they want to win, uh, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, sport pesa and, 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 and yeah. so on, yeah, because um, this country is an anaconda, yeah. And you know, um, it's really squeezing people. Okay, and let's not go political yes, about yes. how these countries. <laughs> yes, let's yes, come back okay. to America. Yes. But um, <laughs> of course, it's hard to find a paradise. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, there are people who, like, I remember ten, uh, like, when I was in Venice some years back. Mm -hmm. But you find people who have swam or done raft across the Mediterranean to go sell fake Gucci handbags at street corners mm -hmm. in Venice. This is the fashion capital, or very close to Milan, the fashion capital. So I think um, she she sort of puts it, uh, that, that experience yes. quite well. Yeah. Yeah, if you go out there, just know you're probably going to either flip hamburgers uh -huh. or wash the bums of geriatrics. There you go. Wash who? Wash the bums of old people. Geriatrics. Who is geriatrics? That's what they're called. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
So that's the reality. So yeah. all of you say like you agree to the fact that she presents reality. Yes. Sir. And you're speaking from an author's perspective. And also from experience. <laughs> and you've yeah. experienced that as yes, well? Yes, okay. I, I lived it, so I saw it. That's why I'm back here. Yes. So, what so is the immigrant thing cocktail you did your story? Uh, what leave me grading? alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I come in with you? Yeah. So is, is the immigrant cocktail your story? No, it's not my story. It's a uh, it's, story. It's called, um, I'm usually a very observant person, okay. so I'll sit. Okay, I know I'm loud, but also I can sit down quietly and just pick things. So I, I used to be very fascinated because when I went to the UK, it was actually out of boredom. I had just finished a stint in, the, in Dar es Salaam. My job, my contract ran out and I was like, okay, what do I do with my life? So I'm like, okay, let me just go and see how things work there. Yeah, it's such a beautiful life. Like, yeah, I wish I could go UK. back to that. I don't have a luxury anymore. <laughs> okay. So I went and I thought, uh, maybe... You know, we see all these people coming home and living all these lives and, you know, drinking and dishing out money and friends. Summer and bunnies. That's what they do Summer bunnies, us. yes. So let me go and see. So I went there and I was depressed. First, it was winter and had just left, like, temperatures of that decade. You picked the wrong so, time to go. winter, oh. depression, and then... Uh, what was depressing you? The weather. <laughs> I couldn't see people. There was no one to talk to because everybody was busy working. Yeah, you know, you got shift to shift and shift to shift. And then you see people, their stories, they start telling you. And they're like, okay, we go and do what he said. And uh, you're a waitress. You're, you know, it's <laughs> degrading jobs, which should not be, I think. But if they're not doing the jobs out of choice, it's because there's nothing else to do. And nobody will offer them something better because first, the accent, two, African three, you know, a citizen. So you got so much against you. Yeah. And I was thinking, so why does nobody tell us what happens? So wait a minute. So it doesn't matter how educated you are, what kind of experience you have. No, not well. There are people who've done really well. Let me not say that it's all. It's good. everyone. There are, yeah. There are people who are doing. You know, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're everybody. But uh, he'd have to be so lucky to go there and get the same position. Really? Yeah, he'll probably be, sorry, he'll probably be told something like, you know, become, you start from a clerk. Now, a guy like him, yeah, wow. I mean, you know. You know what you have me, Lady Catherine? Yeah. It's the idea that there's some African, maybe from Seneca, who's just come from doing his bum duty, then he's flipping burgers, <laughs> and you're there for lunch. <laughs> that, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you go through the same when you studied in Russia? No, uh, I was on scholarship. Meaning you had a better like, life? Like, I was on scholarship and a loving mother. And, uh, and I okay. sort of like, yeah, uh, but then I got shot. You so were shot, shot at? Yes, I'm not shot at, I was shot. Yeah. Uh, with a gun? Yeah, with a gun. I was going to say like the... Yes, yes. And of a girl called Natasha, I don't want to remember. Why don't we bring oh. John here? <laughs> yeah. But a guy called a Boris. Story line. But a guy called Boris of a girl called Natasha. So I came Boris back. Boris the Russian. Think, yes, he was a Russian. Yes. And Natasha is a Russian. Yes. So I, I actually know how this story went, but I know why we'll discuss this story okay. when you're when you're uh, moderating Baba Sege's something wise. Yes, yes. And I'm it lucky. Be and I'm lucky. There. I'm lucky to have a fully functional leg. Wow. Like really? My leg is not wooden. You are to be amputated? Uh, no, not really. I, 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 I think Kismiti it's is such really. an exaggerator. Yeah, but let's yeah, come yeah, back yeah. to this story. <laughs> He's a writer. Yeah. <laughs> He's a writer. Yeah. He builds stories. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. So, yeah. John. Just something on yes. that, what he has said. I think. We, uh, what he said about. Yeah, what being he said about. Uh, <laughs> no, what he said about complexity in okay. Amanda's books. <laughs> so, I think um, the reason why he's thinking it's easier is because the narrator uh, of that story. Is the one I think who is very who is close to Chimamanda. Their lives, I'm sure even even her maybe sometimes there are some things you write about somebody who is close. The narrator you are writing about or who is narrating the, the story is almost mirroring the writer. The I was writer. going there. I was gonna say like I think she wrote her story. Now you're saying no. No, no. It doesn't have to be her story. She, she can bring other people's stories, but it's very close. That is the character who is very close to her. When you read Purple Hibiscus, it's somebody yeah. who is younger. Okay. When you read uh, Half of Yellow Sun, it's a bit, um, she has to do a lot of work, research and all that. Yeah. But 
this one is almost very close to to her life. Yeah. Because she's 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 moving between airports uh, yeah. from Nigeria to to the US and and back. I honestly so, thought it's actually her story. Like she's lived it. But you see, I think that's that's when you realize you're doing well. When As a writer, start trying to identify you from that story. Yeah. 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 Like you've hit success. Yeah, I think. But as, as someone who, and like all of you, I, I haven't written yet, keyword being yet, uh, but um, I kind of just thought like the story was all over the place, like it had a million characters. So I was trying to catch up. Like I found myself going back to a particular chapter to see, okay, we are metokawapi. Like this one has just been <laughs> propped up. So can I first go back and see what I'm And then when I go back, I don't find that person. So I have to read the story hoping that it will take me to an understanding of particular car. I found that a lot. Uh, I don't know if anyone experienced that or it's just Yeah, me. yeah it's, a, it's, it's multiple narratives. It's, it's so many things happening. But it also happens, I think, because I'm a publisher. Yes. Um, there are some writers who write, uh, who take one, a single narrative, which is linear. So just say, this happened. I, I, I moved from Nairobi to Eldoret. But, but the others who, who will take multiple narratives. That's me. Yeah? That's how I do it. So, but do you not have so like things that join your na narratives? Like something that takes me to the next chapter without having to wonder, yeah. how did we get here? Not all the time, because mm -hmm. you can tell a story like, you know, bits and bits, and then at like chapter 15, then you bring all the people in chapter one, two, three, four together. Uh, concentrate. Uh, uh, if you concentrate on the story. <laughs> no, no, no. But why are you making? <laughs> You're assuming I'm reading this book yeah, 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 from like, beginning to end yes, yeah. for the next four hours. Yes, and like you want to make your reader work. Um, <laughs> I, I also found it a bit like um, I don't know, like a bus, like a bus in okay. Lagos. People sometimes yeah, they jump in. And then yeah. they move to the back and then you forget Wait, about that different from yes. and then they, yeah, they, 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 yeah, we used to do that when you were young. Eh? You enter the bus and you keep dodging the conductor. Yeah. Like when they used to be like KBS. Yeah. Yes. You, you keep moving, you see how the conductor is. Then sometimes you are like, when he's coming here, yeah, then you find then you find your rich town. Eh? Uh, they are from, uh, Nairobi Thank you for sharing yeah. a very important part of your child. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The conductor forgets you, and that's sometimes dangerous, like the reader, because uh, why are you making Catherine work so hard? I think maybe it works better, I can see Magunga off camera smiling. Maybe it works better in Nigeria, because even <laughs> Nollywood is like that. Yeah, yeah it's true, yeah. actually. Yeah. So like, maybe, maybe they are used to all that. So was it written then for, for Nigerian or Nollywood audience then? Because it but if it's yeah. global, mm, sometimes it's hard to gauge what a global audience wants because we all want different things so yeah. i think you write as you think people will understand yeah because i'll write something and think i've got everybody and yeah. then everybody will look at it like uh, what are you trying to say yeah because you you can't you can't capture everybody like for me that was not a problem actually yeah it was not you are able problem. to like know yeah, where but if you're learning yeah. authorial sympathy you're not reading I like, like not. a kawa reader you already said that eh, these people should be able to do yeah, what? like I was reading like uh, a car reader, like you yes. know, I have no complexity of multiple narratives yeah. or is the prose in order. Me, I just want to enjoy the story. Right. But that book is less complex than one of the books we'll discuss about Sigi's wife. Yeah. Oh. Wife's where it's, it's like different people talking. <laughs> Many wives. Oh, actually yeah. got voices. Yeah. 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 Voices. So, I think authors, be here for that discussion. Yeah. Authors, authors use different no? ways to communicate. Yeah, authors use different ways yeah. to communicate, and uh, some of them have multiple voices, yeah. which, which is like that one, which is actually more complex. Yeah. So sometimes you don't even know who is talking. You know, you read a whole chapter. Yeah. So like, which okay, wife? Who was that? Yeah. Or like also in this case, uh, for example, where um, her life became better. I think, if I remember correctly, I don't even know what campus she went to. Uh, was it Princeton? I think. So when she was a babysitter, if you remember, at mm. least it's fresh in your mm. mind. Yes. So when she was a babysitter and she has to work for this uh, couple who have a sister and then she's dating this really nice guy called Kurt. So this pro uh, um, prolonged conversation between these two sisters about her, I'm like, come on, stop filling the pages. Why do I, how important this, is this story? Yeah, or is are they going, is Laura and her sister coming up sometime later? So I'm like, let me just read because maybe they'll pop up and then they don't pop up. Yeah. So why create something that is not going anywhere? John. <laughs> Mr. Publisher. I think I can't answer for, 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 for her. Answer for but, her uh, publisher. <laughs> um, 
I, I think she wanted to experiment. Sometimes authors want to experiment with a new style. Yeah. She's an author, she knows. She knows. Sometimes you want to experiment. But I agree, sometimes maybe some characters don't uh, don't have a lot of adult of value yeah. for yeah. some conversations. Yeah. Like I would have been yeah. more interested in the dynamic. Like um, where the Miro, where the black woman or vice versa is not feeling the white guy or the white girl. Because yeah. that happens. Yeah. Sometimes you've got these cultures, eh? yeah. You meet, you can like each other, but eh? yeah. Germany, yeah. there's just no uh, convergence. Yes. Yeah? Yeah? I yeah. Mean, beyond uh, Don't say it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Beyond <laughs> it is a juju. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be interested in Shiko to explore just that dynamic about like a uh, cat and if it, yes. and just that disconnect. Because it's there sometimes there's that black, white or other culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because at home you're like, I understand this one. You know, this one is from Central. Yeah. Or from Nairobi. <laughs> or Mkamba. How wanga you've got something to work with. Yeah? But sometimes someone is from Switzerland. Yes. What do you know about the arts okay. or whatever? Yes. And uh, the problem is that we so assume that, so Mzungu ni Mzungu. You yes. need that. That's the problem. Yes. So you, how did you cope with it perhaps when you are out dating out there in The Britain? cat if a yes, me. Are you yes. asking about my dating life? <laughs> no, no, just in relation to this. In relation to cat and if So for Shiko yeah, yeah. and cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, I, I, I don't know because I think also most of the time when we live, we are not that exposed to like you know like you say or central i can't even tell you're a kiku you're a kiku most of the time maybe 90 percent of the time you get it right because you know you're so used to it and then when you go there like i remember when i went there and my brother would tell me that's a russian and i'm like how do you know because there's a big bottle of what <laughs> no actually you know he because he's very fair-skinned and <laughs> Yeah. To me, a Russian, an American, <laughs> and, you know, you know, they all look the same. But my brother would tell he'd been there for like five years before mm -hmm. me. Uh, and I'm like, how do you know that's a Russian? And he's like, you know, even his poise, even his, you know. So I think you need to be there to start picking up these differences. Otherwise, they, they, it's Muzungu ni Muzungu. Right. That's the way it is. Also, now you start dating and you realize even they are different. Oh. Because an American will be more relaxed, I guess. You know, okay. they have this kind of relaxed thing. And a European will pay more attention. Yeah, they'll pay more attention, but they're kind of, you know, they're usually... Stoic. <laughs> yeah. They usually watch it. <laughs> Stoic. <laughs> they're European. <laughs> no, they're just you know, they're very wondering, well am I manner. offending this one? You know, yeah. they're like, am I offending this one? Or, you know, are we okay? Why? And then he'll... When I'm eating these no. frog legs like this, <laughs> am I offending some friends? <laughs> exactly. Chico, what's the difference though? Like seriously, like on a serious note. I don't know, it's hard to tell the difference. Okay, different because we're all different. But I think also, maybe the weather. Because the British, I've even picked that in my book. Like the British, I think they tend to be more... Because... It's too cold and it, the weather is so miserable yeah. and I think it just makes so you miserable. So they're naturally disposed yeah, as just cold. Yeah, you know, they don't want to smile. Although, like in summer, a lot of people smile because it's okay. nice and lovely and, yeah. you know, and sunny. Yeah. 